Hello, and welcome to this presentation on fiber and face inspection. I'm your presenter, Chris Powalko, and in this presentation, you will be introduced to fiber and face inspection. As well, you will be introduced to fiber optic inspection tools, otherwise known as fiber microscopes, inspect what a good connector end face looks like, and as well, inspect a bad connector end face. In order to maximize the performance of the fiber optics, it is important to inspect the fiber end faces. This confirms that the end face has been installed correctly, that there's no damage to the fiber connector, or the fiber is present. And also as well is that it is free of dust and debris. Because fiber optics are very small, it's impossible for you with your human eye to see the condition of the fiber core and cladding on a microscopic level. On a macro, uh, on a macro level, you could. You could see uh, if there's any dirt or dust or debris on a macro scale, but the majority of the problems that you're gonna find are on a microscopic level. Dust particles and scratches may only be a few micrometers or microns in diameter or in length. So you are not, not gonna be able to see it with the human eye for these types of anomalies. So you would need a microscope that's designed for fiber optics in order to inspect the fibers. So the microscopes come in a couple of different shapes and sizes. So fiber microscopes um, can be uh, simple one piece devices that you simply just plug into the fiber and do an inspection. And some of these microscopes are actually ranging from um, um, around $100 or so uh, to much more expensive. So they are cost effective um, piece, uh, pieces of uh, equipment that you can have inside your toolkit. So now a big warning. Many of these uh, cost effective microscopes do not have protective filters on them. And what a protective filter is, is that if you happen to plug in one of these microscopes into an active fiber, that inside the microscope, there are filters to filter out the light that's coming down that fiber. So there are some microscopes that can uh, have that capabilities, but then there's a lot that don't. Now, if you do expose your eyes to fiber optic light with one of these types of microscopes without a filter, you will damage your eyes. Because essentially what you're doing is you're magnifying the signal that's coming down that fiber. Now, you can still use these microscopes with no problem, and a lot of people do, but you have to ensure that the fiber is not, and I say again, that is not connected to any fiber optic sources. This also includes visual fault locators. So even though it is visible light, um, visual fault locators do have um, the signal strengths that are strong enough that they can do some damage to your eyes. So please ensure that you read the spec sheets of the fiber microscope that you're using and use it appropriately. There are some fiber microscopes that do have filters on them to protect your eyes in the event that you plug in a microscope into an active fiber. Now, some of them um, actually utilizes a video screen. So you would have a probe that would plug into your fiber under test and a handheld video screen. And the nice advantage of this is, is that the fiber optic light coming through, if there is any, uh, will not be transmitted onto the video screen. So it will protect your eyes. Now, an extra added benefit to some of these is that you do have the ability to save a picture of the end face. And that is really good for when you want to document uh, what is happening with regards to that particular fiber. So you, if you go and do an installation or you do a repair and you made sure that all your fiber is clean, you could take a look at your microscope and verify that that is the case. So let's take a look at a good end face. So a couple of things that you want to notice on a fiber when you're looking at it through a microscope is this particular, this here is the fiber itself. Okay, so within and then the core of the fiber, you could just barely see it here. So I'm going to show it. This is the core of the fiber inside the yellow. So inside the green is the cladding 
and inside the yellow is the core of the fiber itself. So a couple of things that you want to make sure of is to ensure that it is a good end phase is that it is free from any dust or dirt, scratches, index matching gel or glue, or anything else such as epoxy is not blocking inside the core here, okay? Because this is where your light is going to be emulating from. So if this is blocked, then your signal is blocked and it's and when it's blocked, it's attenuated and you might not get the performance that you require in order to run that particular link. So when it comes to bad end faces, there's a couple of things that you want to look for when you're doing your evaluation. So the first is anything dark that is covering the core of the fiber. The dark represents light being blocked. So if light is being blocked, then the signal will be attenuated. Second, you want to look for any damages from such things as scratches or scrapes. And third, you want to uh, look for what I call misconnectorization. So an example of that would be epoxy not being polished off after uh, the connector was created. So here's our first look at some bad end faces. So the top picture here that we see has a couple of different things in it that uh, make it really, really bad. First of all, if we look in the cladding, there are some specks of dust in there. As well, around the cladding, there is a circle around it. And that's referred to in the industry as a coffee cup stain. And so uh, as well as the bottom, uh, the bottom picture, shows a really, really bad coffee cup stain. And so what causes coffee cup stains is a or a couple of things. Um, it has to do with your fiber cleaning agent. So a couple of, uh, a couple of different fiber cleaning agents that are used um, out there is 90% um, isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you use less than 90%, you might get some of this that will occur. But the main cause of this is that there's too much of it. And so it wasn't properly cleaned off and it wasn't let to dry out. And so then what had happened was is that then a fiber patch cable was plugged into this. And so then the isopropyl alcohol or the other cleaning agent uh, would actually dry up and it will leave these stains there. Now, a problem with the, this is that when you do some insertions and removals and back and forth, then eventually what starts happening is that the contaminants will actually start migrating into the core of the fiber. Now, if we do look at the bottom uh, picture, which is actually a single mode of fiber, there are specks of dust on here. If we see right here, okay? So there are specks of dust that is actually in the cladding. And so the problem with dust is that dust actually will migrate. So at this particular moment, the dust is not at the core and the core for this uh, particular fiber is actually right here. And it's very, very, very small. So this piece, of, this dust particle right now is not over the core. And if I just erase this, and if, you can, and if you can notice that the dust particle is almost the same size as the core of this single mode fiber. So if that dust gets over top of that core and it will block the light. And when you have a lot the light blockage, it will attenuate the signal, attenuating the signal will end up that your fiber won't work. So here's an example of uh, a particular connector that was subject to a uh, finger touching it. So all of us humans have oils on our skin in order to keep our skin moist and soft. So this particular uh, fiber end phase, all it took was just somebody to touch it and then pull the finger across the, the actual fiber end phase. And so the little dots that you see there and the streaks are actually the oils from your finger. And so once again, anytime that you see a black spot will actually cause attenuation of your fiber signal. So oils in the, on your fingers are not good for fiber end phases. 
And now here's an example of a fiber connector or fiber, a fiber end face that has a couple of issues with regards to it. So the big one is that we see here is that we do have a, a pretty substantial scratch in the actual fiber itself. And, it's, and it protrudes even into the ferrule of the fiber. And then we also have some minor, we also have some other scratches uh, going through it, but this red, the one in red is actually pretty substantive. So that's pretty nasty. Um, as well on this particular um, end face, we also see that we do have some of this, these black streaks here. Okay, and I'm just gonna try to hi highlight them in this blue. So what the black there is, is actually, that's actually from epoxy. And so it was either not polished out correctly or there was too much epoxy that was, that was being used. So this is, this is a sign that um, a couple of things. One, that the, the fiber itself has been damaged and, and as well when the fiber was created, that it was not, the connectorization was not done properly.